Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 38 on measure and integration. Uh, today we will start uh, looking at uh, the notion of absolute continuity of measures. We have started uh, this concept uh, in the previous lecture, uh, but we will uh, do it in the detail in today's lecture. So, we will start with looking at what is uh, called one measure being absolutely continuous with respect to another measure. And then we will prove uh, uh, an important theorem called radon recording uh, theorem for absolutely continuous measures. So, let us uh, start recalling what is uh, absolutely continuous measures. So, if two measures mu and nu given on a measure space uh, measurable space x s, we say nu is absolutely continuous with respect to the measure mu. If for any set E in the sigma algebra s, mu of E equal to 0 implies nu of E equal to 0. That means, if a set E has got mu measure 0, then it should imply that mu measure of uh, the set E is also equal to 0. So, in that case, we write uh, this relation by the symbol that nu with this uh, special symbol, uh, which is less than uh, twice printed. So, it is called absolutely continuous with respect to nu and this is denoted by this symbol. And we looked at uh, an example of absolutely continuous uh, measures. So, we said let us take uh, a function f, which is non negative measurable on a measure space x s mu, and let us integrate this function over a set E in the sigma algebra. And so, this integral f is fixed, mu is fixed, E is varying, and this is a non negative number which we denoted by nu of E. And we had shown when we defined the integral for non negative functions that nu of E is a measure. And it has a special property that if mu of E is equal to 0, then nu of E is also equal to 0. So, this measure nu of E, which is defined via the integral of a non negative function f over a set E, uh, implies that this measure nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. Let us give a, a, a characterization of uh, absolutely continuous measures uh, in terms of what is called epsilon delta definitions, which looks similar to absolute continuity of uh, functions. So, we want to prove the following, namely if mu and nu are two measures such that uh, nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, then the following holds that if nu is finite, then for every epsilon bigger than 0, one can find a delta bigger than 0 says that whenever nu of e is less than epsilon, uh, nu of e is less than epsilon whenever mu of e is less than delta. That means, given an epsilon, you can find a delta. So, that whenever for a set, the measure mu of e is less than delta, that should imply nu of e is uh, less than epsilon. So, let us uh, prove this uh, result. So, we are given that nu and mu are measures on the measure measurable space x s and nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu and nu is finite. To show for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta bigger than 0 such that mu of e less than delta should imply nu of E is less than epsilon. So, the proof is uh, of this is by contradiction. So, suppose not means suppose this claim is not true that that will mean what? So, claim is for every epsilon there is a delta. So, that means that there is an epsilon such that then for every epsilon bigger than uh, no that means then there exists epsilon bigger than 0 such that for every delta there exists a set E belonging to the sigma algebra with the property whenever mu of E 
is less than delta, but nu of e is bigger than or equal to epsilon. So, if we assume that the required claim is not true, that will imply that there is a number epsilon bigger than 0. So, that for every delta, you can choose a set E. Of course, this E will depend on delta. It says that mu of E is less than delta, but nu of E is bigger than or equal to epsilon. So, let us apply this result for, so apply this for delta equal to 1 over 2 to the power n. So, that, that will give us the following. So, when I do that, so for every n, for every n there exists a set E n belonging to S such that mu of E is E n is less than 1 over 2 to the power n, but mu of E n is bigger than or equal to epsilon. So, this is what we get if we assume uh, our result is uh, not true. So, now let us define a set E n to be equal to uh, union of E n uh, E k from k equal to 1 to uh, k uh, equal to n to infinity and a to be equal to intersection of A n s n equal to 1 to infinity. So, let us note the following the set uh, A n. So, uh, mu of A n is less than or equal to sigma mu of E k k equal to n to infinity and mu of E k is less than 1 over 2 to the power k and summation n equal to 1 over 2 to the power n. So, this is uh, going to be equal to 1 over 2 to the power n plus 1. So, mu of a n because mu of uh, E k will be less than 1 over 2 to the power k. So, this says mu of a n is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the power n and this a n is a n is union of n to infinity. So, as n increases, this a n's are going to be smaller and smaller. So, a n is a decreasing sequence and it decreases to the intersection namely a. Right? So, thus nu being finite, a n decreasing to a will imply, so this will imply nu being finite. So, we will have this will imply that nu of a is equal to limit n going to infinity nu of the set a n. But uh, nu of a n, a n is the intersection okay, and uh, sorry intersection of e sorry uh, uh, a n sorry that is okay, a n. So, uh, a n is union of uh, E k okay? and so, uh, so let us observe that is bigger than or equal uh, so and mu of A n is summation. So, it is bigger than or equal to mu of E n because A n is union of E n s okay? because A n is union of uh, E n s so, a n includes e n. So, nu of a n. So, nu of a n is going to be bigger than or equal to nu of e n which is bigger than or equal to epsilon. So, that implies, so this along with this implies that nu of a is bigger than or equal to epsilon. But, we just now observed that mu of a n was less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the power n plus 1. So, uh, what does that imply? So, that implies that mu of the set A okay, and because A is equal to intersection of this. So, mu of A is less than or equal to mu of A n for every n. So, less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the power n plus 1 for every n. So, that implies that mu of A is equal to 0. So, what we have done is 
assuming that the required condition does not hold, we have shown that there is a set A say that mu of A is 0, but nu of A is not equal to 0, it is bigger than or equal to epsilon. So, which is a so this is a contradiction. So, that implies that uh, what we assumed is not true and hence we have uh, the required claim namely that if uh, nu is absolutely continuous with respect to a measure mu and nu is finite, then for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta bigger than 0 such that mu of A uh, less than delta implies nu of the set A has to be less than or equal to epsilon. So, this is what we have proved. So, we have shown that uh, if finite uh, if nu is finite, then the condition that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu implies this required claim. Now, let us uh, uh, prove actually the converse of this statement is also true namely for every epsilon bigger than 0, if there exists a delta such that nu of uh, E is less than epsilon whenever mu of E is less than delta, then nu is absolutely uh, continuous with respect to mu. So, let us prove the converse. So, converse says the following that we have the property that for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta bigger than 0 such that mu of a set E less than delta implies mu of E is less than epsilon. And we want to claim that this property means that nu absolutely continuous with respect to mu. Now, let us suppose, so let mu of E be equal to 0. So, if mu of E is equal to 0, then for every epsilon, for every epsilon whatever delta we take for every delta mu of E is equal to 0 is less than delta. So, that will imply by the given property that nu of E is less than epsilon. So, nu of E is less than epsilon for every epsilon. So, that implies nu of E is equal to 0. So, uh, saying that for every epsilon there is a delta says that mu of E is less than delta implies the nu of E is less than uh, epsilon implies that mu uh, the measure nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. So, the converse uh, is easier and it is true even if nu is not finite. So, we are not uh, use anywhere the fact that nu is finite. So, one way we require nu to be finite that means absolute continuity and nu finite implies this condition that for every epsilon there is a delta says so, that mu of E less than delta implies nu of E less than epsilon. For the converse we do not need this property. So, this is one uh, characterization of uh, absolutely uh, continuous measures. Next, uh, uh, let us recall that uh, we had defined, we had characterized all uh, measures uh, on the real line on the Borel sigma algebra. Uh, we had shown that uh, uh, if a measure mu uh, is absolute, is uh, if given a measure mu on the collection of all uh, Borel measurable sets um, in the real line, there exists a monotonically increasing right continuous function such that uh, for any interval a comma b, uh, mu of a b is given by f of b minus f of a. So, that is the that gave us the characterization of all countably additive set functions on the sigma algebra of Borel subsets of real line. Using that, we would like to characterize what are all absolutely continuous measures on the real line uh, with respect to the uh, Lebesgue measure. So, uh, the theorem states the following namely let f be a monotonically increasing uh, right continuous function uh, and mu f be the measure induced uh, by this monotonically increasing right continuous function f on uh, B r. Then the claim is that uh, this measure mu f is absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure lambda if and only if the function f is absolutely continuous on every bounded interval. So, we would like to prove this uh, result. So, this will give us that what are all measures uh, which are absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure. It ties up with the property of the function f being absolutely uh, continuous. 
So, this relates the two concepts absolutely continuous measures and absolutely continuous functions on the real line. So, let us look at a proof of this. So, let us assume that f is is monotonically increasing and right continuous and mu f is the measure on the Borel sets which is uh, given by for the left open right close interval a comma b it is defined as if you recall we defined it as f b minus f of a and then we showed that this uh, the mu f is the measure is a measure which we called as the measure induced by the function f. So, let us uh, so, this is given. So, let mu f be absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure to show that the function f is absolutely continuous on every interval say a to b. To show that f is absolutely continuous on every interval a to b, what we have to do? We have to show that for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta. So, to show for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta bigger than 0 such that if we take a sequence of intervals say a i b i are finite disjoint intervals, these are finite disjoint intervals in the interval a b in the interval a b with the property with the property that sigma of b i minus a i is less than delta, then that should imply that sigma i equal to 1 to n f of b i minus f of a i is less than epsilon. So, this is what uh, we have to uh, show. So, let us fix. So, let epsilon greater than 0 be given. So, let us start with an epsilon bigger than 0 be given. Now, since mu f is absolutely continuous with respect to lambda, there exists delta bigger than 0 such that lambda of a set E less than lambda of a set E less than delta will imply that mu f of E is less than epsilon. So, this is uh, by the property we just now uh, proved that absolute continuity is equivalent to this property and mu of f on the interval a b is uh, finite such that for every e inside uh, belonging to the Borel sigma algebra of the interval a b, this is true. So, in particular, so in particular if E is a finite disjoint union of intervals A i B i. If uh, E is a finite disjoint union of intervals A i B i inside uh, such that lambda of E such that lambda of E such that lambda of E which is equal to sigma B i minus A i is less than delta. So, that will imply that mu of f of this set E, but mu of f of this set E is nothing but f of B i minus f of A i summation i equal to 1 to n is less than epsilon. That is because we have just now given epsilon we have chosen delta with that property. So, in particular we are applying this for a set E which is a finite disjoint union of intervals a i b i inside the interval a b. 
So, this will imply mu f and by definition mu f of E, which is a finite disjoint union of intervals is nothing but sigma f of B i minus. So, that implies, so hence this proves that f on A B to R is absolutely continuous. So, one way uh, we have proved that uh, if, so we have proved that uh, if uh, f of mu of f the measure induced is absolutely uh, continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure, then the corresponding function f, the monotonically increasing right continuous function f, which is inducing that measure is also absolutely uh, continuous. Let us look at the converse of this statement that we are given that the function f, capital F which is monotonically increasing and right continuous is also absolutely continuous, then we want to show that the corresponding measure mu f is um, absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure. So, let us prove that fact. So, let us prove that. So, assume that mu f is absolutely continuous with respect to lambda. To show Uh, so, uh, we just now uh, showed, no, uh, we have to show the other way around, sorry. So, this is not, this is just now we have shown. So, assume, assume that f is absolutely continuous. to show, so we have to show that mu f is absolutely continuous with respect to lambda. So, this is what we have to show for the other way around uh, proof. So, let us assume, so let E belong to B r and lambda of E equal to 0. So, to show mu f of E is equal to 0. So, this is what we have to uh, show mathematically. So, now let us uh, observe first of all. So, showing that mu f of uh, E is equal to 0. So, enough to show that mu f of E intersection every interval A to B is equal to 0 for every interval a b. Right? So, then uh, by we can split e into uh, every interval. So, we can uh, countable additivity will give us that this is 0 for every e. So, let us assume that we have got. So, enough to show that this is equal to 0. Now, since lambda of E is 0. So, lambda intersection A B is also equal to 0. That means, this set E intersection A B is a set of Lebesgue measure 0. So, by the properties of sets of Lebesgue measure 0, we can find. So, we can find. So, let us uh, for a given epsilon. For a given epsilon, we can find uh, we can find intervals, say a n, b n. We can choose them to be left open, right close, n bigger than or equal to one, two, and so on, such that such that uh, this uh, the set E, which is a null set intersection A B is covered by these intervals a n b n and the total length of this and sigma b n minus a n n equal to 1 to infinity is less than epsilon. 
So, total length of this uh, is uh, small. Okay. This is by the property that uh, the set uh, by the property that uh, E is a null set. So, E intersection A B is a null set. So, uh, by the definition of after measure if you like, you can find a sequence of left open right closed intervals which cover this set and the total length of these covering intervals is small is less than epsilon. Okay. So, now let we what we want to show our aim is to uh, show that the function f is absolutely continuous. So, let us let us uh, take any number say alpha let alpha bigger than 0 be given then we are uh, we have to it is enough to uh, show that mu of that thing is equal to. So, what is to be shown we have we are given that f is absolutely continuous then by absolute continuity by absolute continuity of f there exists by the absolute continuity of f there exists some delta bigger than 0 such that whenever say that whenever intervals um, say intervals a n b n uh, are disjoint in a b with sigma b n minus a n some n equal to some 1 to k right uh, finite number of disjoint intervals a b less than delta will imply that f of b n minus f of a n n equal to 1 to k is less than alpha. So, this is by the absolute continuity of the function f which is given to us. Okay. Now, so we start with given any alpha bigger than 0, we find a delta with this property and now for this delta, we apply our earlier thing that uh, lambda of this was a null set. So, for any given epsilon, so we will uh, use this when epsilon is equal to when epsilon is equal to uh, delta, because when epsilon is equal to delta, we will have the summation of these intervals less than uh, delta and uh, that will imply, okay. uh, so that will imply the corresponding. So, so, by, so let us call this thing as uh, star, so this thing as star, okay. so by star with epsilon is equal to delta, so by star with epsilon equal to delta okay uh, we have so for so we'll uh, we'll have that sigma uh, of f b n minus f of a n n equal to 1 to k is less than alpha for every k. Okay. So, this happens uh, uh, for every k. Okay. So, that implies that sigma of n equal to 1 to infinity f of b n minus f of a n is also less than alpha, because this is happening for every k, but that implies that mu of E intersection A B, which was mu f of this, which was less than or equal to, because E intersection A B was contained in the union of intervals A and B n. So, it is less than or equal to sigma mu f of A n B n, n equal to 1 to infinity and this is equal to sigma n equal to 1 to infinity of f of b n minus f of a n which is less than alpha. So, what we have shown is that for every alpha 
mu f of E intersection A B is less than or equal to alpha. So, that implies, so this, uh, this happens uh, because this is happening for every alpha. So, this implies that mu f of E intersection A B is equal to 0, because this is happening for every alpha. So, we can let alpha go to 0. So, hence we have shown that lambda of E equal to 0 implies this mu f of E intersection A B is equal to 0 for every A B and so that implies because this is happening for every A B. So, this implies that mu f is of E is equal to 0. So, hence mu f is absolutely continuous with respect to lambda. So, this proves the other way around uh, theorem. So, this completes the proof of the theorem that mu f is absolutely continuous with respect to lambda if and only if the function f is absolutely uh, continuous on every bounded interval. So, this completely characterizes and ties up the notion of absolutely continuous measures on the real line with respect to Lebesgue measure with ab uh, absolutely continuous functions on the a real line. Uh, next, uh, we want to prove a theorem called uh, uh, a theorem called von Neumann theorem, uh, which is uh, a very uh, nice theorem and uh, gives a uh, it it uses very uh, nicely and very intelligently uh, the fact that uh, the dual of the L2 of a measure space is itself that we called as the Ries representation theorem, namely that if uh, t is a continuous linear functional on L 2 of a measure space, then it is essentially given by the inner product uh, by the inner product. So, this is used very effectively. We will not be giving a proof of this theorem. Those who are interested uh, can read the textbook, but we will see how this theorem is used to prove some results about uh, measures. So, let us first state this theorem uh, called von Neumann uh, theorem. So, the theorem says let us take two measures mu and nu, uh, which are sigma finite measures on measurable space x s. Then it says there exists mutually disjoint sets x i measurable sets such that the file following th properties hold. First of all, this x 1, x 2, x 3 give a partition of the space x. So, x is partitioned into three parts x 1 union x 2 union x 3 on x 3 and x 1. So, nu of x 3 is equal to 0. That means, nu has no for any subset in x 3 the measure of a set is equal to 0. So, that means, nu at the most gives values to subsets on uh, x 1 and x 2. On the other hand, mu of x 1 is equal to 0. That means, mu gives values to subsets possibly in x 2 and uh, x 3. So, nu of x 1 and nu of x 3 is equal to 0, mu of x 1 is equal to 0. And on the set x 2, on the set x 2, there is a function g, which is a non-negative measurable function such that for every subset uh, E of measurable subset E of x 2, nu of E can be written as integral of uh, the function g over the set E. So, it in some sense describes. So, it says, so let us take uh, this is my set x and we have got two measures mu and nu. It says we can decompose into three parts x 1, x 2 and x 3 uh, into three parts x 1, x 2 and uh, x 3 uh, into three parts um, x 1, x 2 and x 3 and on this part mu of x 1 is 0. On this part, mu of x 3 is equal to 0. So, in this part nu is 0, in this part uh, mu is 0 and on this part x 2, on this part x 2, this uh, uh, nu of any set E, for any set E here, it can be written as integral over E of g d mu. So, this property holds on this set. So, this is uh, a, a decomposition of uh, uh, decomposition of uh, the von Neumann 
So, let us uh, just uh, recall. So, the von Neumann decomposition theorem says that given two measures nu and uh, mu and nu, which are sigma finite of course, we can decompose x into three parts x is equal to x 1 union x 2 union x 3, nu of x 3 is equal to 0, mu of x 1 so uh, is equal to 0 and on the middle part x 2 the measure nu can be represented in terms of the measure mu by the property that nu of e is equal to integral g uh, d mu. So, this uh, is called uh, von Neumann's theorem uh, and it is very useful theorem uh, we will see soon. So, using this theorem, we prove what is called uh, the Lebesgue decomposition theorem. So, Lebesgue decomposition theorem says the following that suppose mu and nu are two sigma finite uh, measures on a measurable space x s, then it implies that there exists sigma finite measures nu a and nu s with the following properties namely, this measure nu can be written as a sum of two measures nu lower a and plus nu lower s. So, the measure nu can be written as the sum of two measures nu of a plus nu of s and what are the properties of these two measures? The first property says that measure nu of a is representable in terms of the measure mu via integrals. So, it says nu of a for any subset E is integral of a non negative measurable function f over the set E. So, it says there exists a unique uh, non negative measurable function f such that to compute nu of a of any set E, we just integrate f over the set E. And the second part uh, says it describes what is the measure nu s. It says there is a set A such that mu of a complement is 0 and nu s of a is equal to 0. That means, uh, mu and nu s uh, are sitting on disjoint sets. Mu of a complement is 0. So, that means, mu sits on a and nu s of a is equal to 0. So, nu s uh, is on uh, a complement essentially. So, this is what is called Lebesgue decomposition theorem. So, we want to show that how it arises uh, out of uh, as an application of von Neumann's theorem. So, and uh, this is also a part of uh, the consequence that such a decomposition is unique. So, let us look at by von Neumann uh, theorem uh, given the measures uh, nu and mu, we have disjoint sets x 1, x 2 and x 3 such that the following property holds. Uh, we recall that x is equal to x 1 union x 2 union x 3 and nu of x 3 is equal to 0 and mu of x 1 is equal to 0. So, mu does not give any mass or does not give any measure to this set x 1 and nu does not give any measure to this set uh, x 3. And on x 2, uh, we re recall that for every set E uh, measurable set, if we look at E intersection uh, x 2, then we can uh, compute this measure as an integral of a non negative measurable function g. Uh, over this at uh, E intersection x 2. And uh, moreover, recall this is a non negative g is a non negative measurable function and g is equal to 0 on the complement of the set E 2. So, that is the because uh, the measure nu on x 3 is equal to uh, 0. So, this is the by von Neumann's theorem. Now, uh, it is easy to define what should be our uh, measures nu a and uh, so on the set x 2, we should define nu a to be equal to equal to nu on x 2. So, let us define, let us put a equal to x 2 union x 3 and on this set for every set e belonging to s nu of a of e is defined as nu of a intersection e and on the complement of uh, this part. So, nu s of e that is going to be e intersection x 1 because x 1 is the complement of a that is a complement. So, define nu, uh, nu uh, the measure nu as nu of a intersection e restrict nu to e and uh, restrict uh, nu to x 1 to get the measure nu s. And now, uh, obviously, these two are uh, nu s and nu a are measures that is obvious from the definition. And uh, also is clear from the definition 
that the measure nu is nothing but nu a because nu a is on a and nu s is on a complement. So, nu is nothing but nu a plus nu s and the measure nu s on a complement is equal to 0. So, this satisfies uh, the required properties only we have to check that nu of uh, a is given by the integral and that is obvious because nu a of e is nu of e intersection x 2 union x 3 by the definition because a is x 2 union x 3 and on x 2 it is given by e intersection x 2 integral g d mu because uh, nu of uh, x 3 uh, is equal to 0. So, nu of a is given by the integral. So, that proves uh, the theorem except for the fact that at present g is defined only on uh, x 2. So, there is no, not a issue we can extend it to the whole by putting it equal to 0. Then it has the required property that f is defined as a non negative measurable function defined on the whole space uh, x and nu a of e is given by the integral. So, that proves uh, Lebesgue decomposition theorem and the uniqueness is uh, is only a manipulation of the measures. So, which will really leave it as a reading exercise uh, uh, for the uh, reader uh, to verify. So, uh, uniqueness uh, we will assume the uniqueness part of it. So, Lebesgue decomposition. So, let me go back and state uh, understand what is Lebesgue decomposition theorem. It says that given two uh, sigma finite measures on a measure space, the measure one of the measures say let us nu can be written as a sum of two measures nu a and nu s, where nu a is given by integration and nu s sits on a part which is complement to the part of mu of a. So, this is nu of a is given as a integral and mu of a complement is same as nu s of a is equal to 0. So, this theorem is called Lebesgue decomposition theorem. So, this the measure nu s that we have defined just now gives a, a let us make it as a definition. So, two measures mu and nu are said to be singular with respect to each other or we say mu is singular with respect to nu. If there is a set say that mu of the set E is 0 and nu of the E complement is equal to 0. That essentially says we can decompose the space x into two parts E and E complement and mu sits on one part and nu sits on the other part. So, such measures are called singular and it is obvious that if mu is singular with respect to nu, then nu is singular with respect to mu. So, it is a commutative relation of singularity while absolute continuity was not. So, nu absolutely continuous with respect to mu need not imply mu is absolutely continuous, while the singularity is true that namely if mu is and this singular is also written as mu perpendicular. So, this is also read as singularity is also said mu is orthogonal or mu is perpendicular to nu and written as mu perpendicular to the nu. So, Lebesgue decomposition theorem and now can be stated in terms of uh, this singularity that given two measures which are sigma finite on a measure space x s, there exist sigma finite measures nu a and nu s such that the following properties hold namely nu is decomposed into two parts nu a plus nu s, where nu of a is absolutely continuous with respect to mu and nu s is orthogonal with respect to mu. So, this is uh, the decomposition that essentially it says that the measure nu has got absolutely continuous part and absolute continuous part says you can obtain nu of a via integration and singular part says that this is the other part which is completely orthogonal to mu. So, they say it is disjoint says you cannot do anything there, they are disjoint sets. They say it on what one says they are, their sports are disjoint essentially. So, this is what is called Lebesgue decomposition theorem and as a consequence of this we will get uh, what is called the radon Nikodym theorem which uh, characterizes absolutely continuous measures and it says that if two measures mu and nu which are sigma finite on a measurable uh, space x s be such that uh, nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, then there is a non negative measurable function f such that nu of e is given 
via integration over of f over the set E. So, that uh, completely characterizes absolutely continuous measures. Recall, if we define nu of E by this, then we have already shown um, that was the beginning of our uh, analysis saying that any measure nu defined in terms of uh, integral with respect to mu is absolutely continuous and this is the converse part of it. Namely, if nu is uh, absolutely continuous with respect to mu, then there must be a non-negative measurable function f such that nu of E is equal to integral of f over E with respect to the measure mu. And the proof is obvious from uh, the Lebesgue decomposition theorem and the uniqueness part of it, because we know that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. So, when we apply Lebesgue decomposition theorem to the measures nu and mu, nu will be decomposed into two parts, the absolute continuous part and the singular part but there is no singular part. So, there is only absolutely continuous part and the absolutely continuous part we have already seen in Lebesgue decomposition theorem is given via integrals. So, this is a direct application of uh, Lebesgue decomposition theorem and uh, this function f is also unique in the sense that if there are two functions then f must be equal to g almost everywhere and that happens because if there is another function g with the same property then integral of f over every set E is equal to integral of g over every set E and that uh, implies that f must be equal to g almost everywhere that we have seen earlier. So, radon decadim theorem the proof is an application of Lebesgue's decomposition theorem and Lebesgue decomposition theorem is an application of von Neumann's theorem. So, once again saying that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu by Lebesgue decomposition theorem nu of a must be equal to nu because that is absolutely continuous and nu of s is equal to 0. So, that says that nu of e is given by integral over f by the Lebesgue decomposition theorem. And as such we said uniqueness is obvious because integral f is equal to integral g must imply that f is equal to g almost everywhere. So, this is uh, so radon nicodium theorem is one of the most uh, important and subtle theorems of our subject, uh, because just from the existence of uh, same so null sets mu of E equal to 0 implies nu of E equal to 0. This property simple property about null sets says that nu must be obtainable from mu via integration. It is uh, it's really a deep and uh, amazing theorem uh, of our subject. And uh, let me also point out there are many uh, proofs available of uh, this theorem. We have given a proof which is via von Neumann's theorem uh, and von Neumann's theorem uses the fact that the dual of L 2 is L 2. There is another purely measure theoretic proof of this, but that goes into the realm of uh, what is called uh, signed measures. So, one looks at signed measures um, and then one decomposes a signed measure. This is something called a Hahn decomposition theorem that every signed measure is a difference of two measures and then from there one deduces Lebesgue decomposition theorem and then comes to uh, radon recording theorem. So, that is another route possible for proving uh, this theorem. So, both the proofs um, are available in the text and we have uh, outlined here only one proof which is more function theoretic using that dual of L 2 is L 2. Well, this gives uh, the notion of absolute continuity also gives rise to the notion of what is called the derivative. So, let us uh, define that. So, whenever two measures mu and nu are sigma finite and nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. So, radon decadium theorem says that nu of E must be given by a function a unique function f. This unique function f is called the radon decadium derivative of uh, the measure uh, nu with respect to mu and is denoted by d nu by uh, d mu. So, here are some simple properties of this uh, radon decadium derivative which are very much uh, similar to the derivative of functions. Namely, if mu 1, mu 2 and nu are sigma finite measures then and if mu i each mu 1 and mu 2 is absolutely continuous with respect to mu then mu 1 plus mu 2 is also absolutely continuous and the radon decadium derivative of the sum is equal to sum of the radon decadium derivatives of course, almost everywhere. So, very much similar to the derivative of the sum is equal to uh, 
sum of the derivatives for functions. And similarly, if mu 1 is absolutely continuous with respect to mu 2, sorry this is a mistake here and mu 2 is absolutely continuous with respect to mu 1, that means both are absolutely continuous with respect to each other, then the product of the derivative is, is equal to 1. So, that is the second property. So, here it should be uh, mu 2 absolutely continuous with respect to mu. And finally, if nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu 1 and mu 1 is absolutely continuous with respect to mu 2, then there is a kind of associativity property. Namely, this implies that nu must be absolutely continuous with respect to mu 2 and the derivative. So, d mu 2 over d nu is computable as d mu 2 over d mu 1 multiply by the derivative d mu 2 over this should be d nu here, this should be d nu. So, it is like a chain rule for the derivative uh, functions. So, with that idea of uh, this set of ideas uh, namely absolutely continuous functions and absolutely continuous measures uh, is complete and uh, in the remaining uh, next lecture, we will look at uh, some special properties of sequences of uh, measurable functions and the ways, uh, various ways they can converge to a function f. Thank you.